And in this video, we're going to be talking about an oyster parasite, which is a polychaete that is notorious for causing the collapse of aquaculture industries worldwide, from Australia to New Zealand to Hawaii, among other places. This video is going to give you information that will help you identify the parasite on your farm and provide you with solutions to help you control the infestation. Let's start with the basics. Polydora websteri is a marine worm and it belongs to a group of animals called polychaetes. Most of these animals exist naturally in the environment and occupy various ocean habitats and substrates. Polydora is one of a number of shellfish parasites that live on or inside the oyster shell. Polydora worms make their way inside oyster shells by creating small burrows or canals on the margin of the shell. This parasite gets its food and shelter at the expense of its oyster host. Over time, as the oyster lays down more shell and the worms get larger, these burrows continue to grow and become blisters. Seen here, bumps or pockets filled with mud between the oyster and the shell. Beside the effect of the parasite on oyster growth and survival, the impact of the parasite poses other challenges to your shellfish farm. Infected oysters accumulate anoxic mud and feces over time. The financial impact of these worms on each farm is going to be different depending on the market for your oysters. In general, this is problematic for oysters that are sold for the half shell market or sold whole for the barbecue. Even if oysters are not sold directly to consumers, if infected oysters are not treated, the worms continue to reproduce and can infect other oysters in the area. Given the importance of this parasite, one of our main goals is to understand if it is infecting oysters from California to Alaska. With funding from the USDA Western Regional Aquaculture Center, we've been developing two simple treatments that growers can apply on farm. They both involve drying, either indoor or outdoor. Indoor, oysters can be held at ambient temperature or in a refrigerated space. Here we're demonstrating one type of application using growing bags, where oysters are placed on a drying rack or table in a single layer. Alternatively, you can also place them in a walk-in cooler. From our experiments, we've learned that what is most important is that oysters are in a single layer with a lot of air movement so they can dry properly. Drying times can vary. Our recommendations are two to three days, depending upon your local environment and the method you choose to dry your oysters. To prevent oyster mortality, we don't recommend keeping oysters out of the water for more than 72 hours. These treatments are effective at killing the worms while keeping the oysters healthy. Thank you so much for your attention to this very important topic. If you would like more information, please see the description and links below the video. I am Dr. Julieta Martinelli from the University of Washington.